Hagar. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> thumbs up for the hedgehog, thumbs down for the bear, sideways <laughs> thumbs for Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs>
so we had a professor in college that um, if he gave a test or a quiz, and I think it was uh, electromagnetic theory uh, in electrical engineering, if he gave a quiz or a test, if your dimensions did not agree, so DDA, dimensions do not agree, if he wrote that on your test uh, paper, you know that you were getting zero credit for the answer there. Even if numerically the answer was correct, if you didn't show the work and make sure that the equation was dimensionally accurate, He'd give you zero credit, and you could walk out of that. <laughs> you could walk out of that class with like a zero on a test, and some kids did, right? And it's pretty demeaning when you walk out um, after you put that much time studying, you know, engineering classes. So you may be scratching your head at this point and asking, "What do you mean by dimensional accuracy?" For example, in our calculation here, the ultimate goal for us is to get to a mile per hour. That is the speed of this motorcycle. And we need to show that we have worked this equation to a degree that is dimensionally accurate and also mathematically gives us the correct answer. Otherwise, there's too much room for error. Look, you don't need to remember equations. Yes, sometimes you need to remember some conversions to make your life simple, but you should be able to derive equations. If you're faced with a complex problem, you can usually work yourself out of that complex problem because you understand how the process works of dimensionally kind of working that problem backwards and figuring out how to break it down into its parts and then figuring out a dimensionally correct and numerically correct answer at the end. And that's super important. I'm kind of old school when I'm out in the garage. I like to just do simple calculations on the uh, on the paper here. And when we come out with the big numbers, then I'll pull out my phone. We're going to make sure we're dimensionally accurate and that we're numerically accurate as well. So I'm going to write the equation out and you can use this for any conversion. We know ultimately we want to get to miles per hour. It's going to be the end of our equation there. Our motor, electric motor, there's 3300 revolutions per minute. And what we want to do is turn that into linear speed, right? And so we know that the circumference of the tire is 2 pi r, so 2 pi times our radius. So we're going to write 2 times pi and 10 and I'm going to put a little I down there to note that that is in inches because ultimately we're going to want to get two miles that is per revolution so you're going to move 2 pi 10 inches for every one revolution so we already have revolutions canceled out in our equation there and we said our gear ratio was 10 over 82 so that's our ratio and this being a ratio it's dimensionless right so it's teeth divided by teeth all right so just remember this is our gear ratio this is somewhat similar concept as you use on a car and uh, it's drivetrain if you're talking about if you turn the tire one time how many rotations does the drive shaft actually go through and that's depending on the gearing the differential gearing like for example my van has a, th a 1 to 3.73 gear ratio in it and that means for every one turn of the wheel the drive shaft will turn 3.73 times so we know there's 60 minutes in one hour right so we've already dimensionally got our hours on the bottom here so we're canceling out our minutes here we're in inches here so we want to get to miles so let's do a inch to feet conversion so for every 12 inches there is one foot so our inches cancel out with the inches in our circumference equation there so now we're in feet per hour and we want to get to miles per hour for every 5,280 feet there's one mile so in order to get this to cancel out 5,280 feet and one mile then we have a feet to cancel out we're left with miles per hour and that's a dimensionally accurate equation right so we know we're going to come out with our miles per hour so now we just have to do the math so we multiply 3300 by 2 by pi which is 3.14 we're going to go to two decimal places here which will be accurate enough for us 3300 times 2 times 3.14 times 10 times 60 on the top and on the bottom we've got 82 times 12 times 5280 and since those are big numbers and I'm not that great at math, I'm gonna use a calculator because a calculator is a wonderful tool to use. So I'm gonna break out my phone here and do a little math on the phone. So 
So we come out with 23.93 miles per hour. That theoretically is the top speed of this motorcycle. Now this is for a completely efficient system. We know that is baloney in the real world. So we can throw that out the window and I'm gonna be generous here and say 75, maybe 80% efficiency. Let's go 75. So I'm gonna multiply this number by 0.75 and we get 17.9 miles per hour. So 18 miles per hour. Um, if we were 80% efficient, we'd get a number of 19.14. So 19.144 at 80% efficiency. So 38.5 kilometers per hour. And obviously there's friction in the system with the chain on the sprocket. There's heat being lost through the electrical system and the internals of the electric motor itself. So those are all kind of accounted there, accounted for there, but when my weight gets on that bike, then I expect that there's gonna be somewhat of a difference in what our top speed actually is. If we had to work this problem out and came out to 9.144 as a numerical answer, but we didn't show how we actually got there, this would have been a zero credit problem if it was on one of uh, the tests or one of the quizzes for this particular professor, right? So you have to show how you get there and this kind of helps you make sure that you're dimensionally accurate and then you can go back and just do your multiplication, division, whatever, matrix math, whatever you do, and that will get you numerically correct. We're gonna do a few top speed runs. I've got an app on the iPhone here that's gonna give us some GPS speed. Holy cow, what is that? All right, so we just did a couple of runs. That's our speed. So uh, the old bear there that was driving it weighs about 100 pounds. So that's 21 miles per hour uh, with a 100 pound person riding. I'm gonna do the same test with me. So I'm probably about 185 and uh, we'll see what the difference is. I expect there's gonna be like a couple mile per hour difference, I'm sure. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, we yeah, buddy. All right, 20 miles per hour. Yeah. <clears throat> I've actually upgraded the battery pack in this. If you haven't seen that video, go back and watch the uh, LiPo battery conversion I did on this motorcycle. So it's running a little bit hotter than 48 volts uh, and it's got uh, 20 amp hours worth of battery in it. So your re results will probably be similar with the AGM battery. You're just not gonna get as much riding time from them. So, all right, now we know. Hope you enjoyed the content. Till next time, skill up and ride. Ban up and go.